Welcome to the Beyond Formulas Excel Modeling Training Series. In this lesson, we'll cover basic problem structuring. The goals of this lesson are to teach you what an issue tree is and how to break any problem down into its mutually exclusive and comprehensively exhaustive, or MISI, components. We'll cover the difference between an issue tree without numbers, also known as a hypothesis tree, and one more focused on solving a mathematical problem. This is arguably the most important step in the whole process, as it ensures that you have captured all of the most important factors in a logical and cohesive manner, and it provides the bedrock on which the rest of your analysis and the model itself will be built. Why do we use a structured problem solving approach anyway? One of the biggest challenges with just putting your head down and starting to model is that the logic of your model evolves haphazardly and without any kind of input or direction from your clients or stakeholders who typically understand the basic business much better than you do. As you go, various challenges arise and you solve them in the moment, but without understanding what that design choice means down the road. At some point, your client or stakeholder has a look at your output and catches these flaws, meaning that you usually have to rip out the guts of your entire model to fix the problem. This is one of the biggest reasons for terrible work-life balance for analysts, since logical flaws inevitably surface, often at a big presentation, and cause pain and suffering for the analyst and their team. If this hasn't happened to you yet, it will. To help you get around the problem of haphazard emergent modeling logic, and to help you better articulate what your model does and how it does it, you can use an issue tree. The issue tree is a vital part of the modeling process, as you should understand the exact relationships between key variables before you start building it into Excel. Although this may initially feel very difficult, uncomfortable, and unnecessary, I promise you that the effort you put in upfront on this step will much more than pay for itself in avoiding pain and suffering leading up to the big presentation. In addition to saving you time, it involves your stakeholders quickly from virtually day one, which keeps them engaged, interested, and bought into the whole process, so that they can't turn around and pretend they have not had the say in developing the answer. This also makes it less likely that this stakeholder will sabotage your work in front of his own superiors in the final week. So what is an issue tree? It's essentially a flowchart, or a mind map, of the hierarchy of your model, which shows the breakout of each level into more and more detailed levels of information. Here's an example. Always start with a problem statement. From here, each step is dependent on a small number of component steps, which are in turn dependent on further components. When a component in your tree can no longer be broken up into pieces, but involves a single concept or a single variable, then you have an end or a leaf node. So what is this messy thing anyway? Assume you have a solution space, and you come up with three solutions. You'll notice that each of these three solutions are entirely separate, they have no overlap. But what you'll also notice is that there's a part of the solution space not covered by the three solutions. This is what we mean when we say something is not comprehensively exhaustive. The solutions do not exhaust the solution space. Now let's take the same solution space, but assume that we have three overlapping solutions. It is clear that the three solutions adequately cover the entire solution space. However, A, B, and C are overlapping. The three solutions in this case are not mutually exclusive. Listing one of the solutions inherently implies listing another one because of the overlaps. Now let's look at a MISI solution. Taking the same solution space, you can see how we divided it into four solutions of equal measure, covering every part of the solution space and with each solution being entirely separate. This set of solutions is mutually exclusive and comprehensively exhaustive. So how do we apply this newfangled concept to an issue tree anyway? For an issue tree to be mutually exclusive, for each level in the tree there should be no overlap between any buckets, the primary colors of light, for example. And for the issue tree to be comprehensively exhaustive, the bucket should cover every eventuality, there should be no set of things that don't fit into at least one of the buckets. Let's take the arbitrary problem statement, what should I wear today? You may then ask, is it dry outside, or is it wet outside? There are no other options besides those two, meaning that the first level is messy. Under the dry scenario, you may ask if it's hot or if it's cold, and you may ask the same question for if it's wet. If it's hot and dry outside, you would wear a t-shirt, but if it's dry and cold outside, you may then ask if it's windy or not, and based on that, you may make a different decision. If it's wet and hot, you would wear a raincoat, and again, if it's wet and cold, you may need more information before making a decision, although both scenarios may end up with the same answer. 
The reason you go through this messy process is so that you always know that you aren't missing anything and that there isn't any interdependence between your branches that could confuse you later down the track. Now let's use our issue tree and MISI concepts to get into some numbers. Assume you have the same issue tree as before, but this time the relationship between the variables is mathematical. Perhaps the first layer in the tree needs to be subtracted from one another, whereas some of the sublayers of the tree need to be multiplied by each other, added and subtracted, or divided. You could see how, starting with some values in the green cells, you could work your way up to an answer in the red cell. Let's apply this to a real-world problem statement, namely a profit issue tree. Profit is revenue minus cost. Revenue is price times quantity. Cost is the combination of variable cost and fixed costs. If you look at quantity, it may be a function of the addressable market, the penetration levels, and the returns. And variable cost is going to be a function of the quantity sold times the variable cost per unit. For your Excel model, what you'd like to be able to do is build one of these mathematical issue trees that describe the entire set of relationships between all variables in the model you expect to build. In practice, building issue trees is really hard because there is no such thing as a perfect issue tree. You always have to make some trade-offs. For example, if you have multiple products, then you can approach this in one of two ways. You can either have revenue broken down by product with each product having a different product times quantity end node, or you can have a revenue line broken into price and quantity and then into products and imply that they get multiplied together in the marketing mix. If you don't think this is complicated enough, try adding variable cost based on the quantity of items by product you sell and you can see where things start to get messy. Don't panic. A few dotted lines between your nodes in your tree or a few repeated nodes to take into account things like quantity isn't the end of the world. Don't get hung up on the process of building the issue tree. Rather focus on maximizing the value of the tree in helping you lay out, think through, and communicate your model logic. That's the reason you're doing this after all.